Okay, so this is a 2011 C250. It's a W204 chassis. Uh, C classes from 2008 to 2014 are designated with the uh, W204 chassis. Okay, so what happens when you have a bad steering lock? These are the symptoms. Uh, you stick your key in the ignition. Usually when you stick your key in the ignition, it unlocks the steering wheel, okay? The steering wheel is locked right now. You can't really move it. You can move it a little bit. It's got a little bit of play, but you can't really move it uh, much. You couldn't turn the wheels. Now, there's the ignition switch. Here's the key. I'm gonna stick it in the ignition, and you didn't hear that noise that you usually hear when the steering lock unlocks the steering wheel, and the steering wheel is still locked right? It's still locked. Okay. Uh, so that's your first sign that you've got a bad steering lock. And then you turn the key. That's one. That's two. That should be, you should have all your lights on here for the dash, but nothing comes on. We're already in position two. Nothing comes on. It just has the trip mileage up there. That's another symptom of a bad steering lock. Okay. Also, you can try your windows. Windows don't work, all right? Okay, so in order to get it here, this guy had to tow it out here because uh, obviously it doesn't start. So in order to get it into neutral, if you have to tow it someplace to your mechanic shop or unless you're gonna do this yourself, you have to take this little uh, cover off. It's just, it's got some clips on the side there. You can see one clip there, one clip. Inside here, there's that little yellow plastic tab you can press down on that and then hold the brake and you can get this into gear into neutral okay I'm gonna put it in neutral say okay. holding that little button down you can move it into neutral okay okay so uh, how do we know for sure right that it's not uh, a bad battery or uh, some other issue bad starter sometimes mechanics will say oh you got a bad battery or it's a bad starter but if you have a scanner, this is one of the surest ways that you can check to see if it's your electronic ignition switch. It's just called the MB2i Carsoft, and it's about 150 bucks on Amazon, okay? I'll put a link to this product in the description. So first thing you do, you hook up the OBD2 connector down here, pop this off, plug this in. So we're gonna start it up, okay? Okay, we're gonna go to diagnose, we're gonna go to bends. And then we're gonna go to hit okay on bends, hit okay. And then we're gonna find the 204 C class. There it is, 204 C class. Okay. Gasoline engine. Left hand steering. This is a 250, so we're looking for the 250. It's not a CGI. Here it is, 230, 250. I'm going to go down to manual select. Manual select. And then you're gonna find the, they call it EZS. It's really your, your your electronic ignition switch module right here. This is the EZS module, okay? Hit okay here. I'm gonna read the fault code. And there you go, current and stored. It says, the electronic steering lock has a malfunction. There is a mechanical fault. Current and stored. And now you know 100% it's your steering lock, not your starter, not your battery. Steering lock. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the steering column out. That's what you usually have to do with these. Um, before I take the steering column out, I'm going to see if I can get this to open one more time. I'm going to take off the kick panel down here. I'm going to take off this kick panel. There's three screws. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. I think those are T25s or T20s. I'm gonna take those out. So I got a T20 here. Okay. 
just pops right down. Pull it out. There's the OBD2 connector. And that's the uh, hood release. Okay. There's a little screw in there. You're going to have to get that screw from the bottom. For the OBD2 connector, you just pull this back like that. See? Just pull it back and push it through from the bottom, from down here, just push it through. And it pops right out. There's your OBD2 connector out. There's also, as you can see, there's a light. There's a light back here. This we're just going to pull right out. You can turn it. See? See how it turns? That's locked. Turn it counterclockwise. Pull the light out. And the last part is this part here. So there's a Phillips head screw on the underside of this. I'm gonna to try to film it for you. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. Yeah. It's right in there. So you're gonna to have to get a screwdriver and just unscrew that screw. Okay, so we just got the little screw out. This is it. Phillips head. And push it through. Okay, it's out. And that's it. You had your OBD2 connector, you had your hood latch release, and then you have a little light here. And then you can remove this whole kick panel, okay? I'm just gonna put it over here. And now, we're gonna be working on this steering column here. Most likely, we're gonna have to take this whole steering column out. And let's find out if this is Oh good, this is a manual, manually adjustable steering column. Makes it a little easier. I can just pull it out straight from here. I'm not going to have to remove the steering wheel. Uh, you do have to remove the steering wheel when you have an electronically adjustable uh, steering column uh, because you can't just pull it out. It won't fit. It won't fit through the dash there. This one will because it's the manual one. See, this is the manual one. And now you just, you can either move it up down in and out um, when it's when it's the automatic one or the electric one you have to remove that pedal by just removing these two I think they're 13 millimeter um, plastic nuts I should say so just remove these two and there's a, there's a connector there's a connector on the back over here back there there's your connector just disconnect that connector and it comes out and then the whole steering column comes out through the bottom you have to you know of course you're gonna take take this off uh when you when you disconnect the uh airbag you want to have the battery disconnected so that you don't have an srs light on afterwards okay so i tried banging on it a bit um the steering lock that is and it wouldn't budge it still does not unlock sometimes you can get lucky and it unlocks and there's less work to be done you don't have to remove the whole steering column you just loosen the bolts of the steering column to get the esl out but in this case i'm gonna have to pull the whole steering column so uh the first with this model here with the trim that goes all the way across over there uh first thing you do is just loosen up this trim here uh what i do is i just open up the glove box i get under it on this side over here and start to work your way up it just pops right out there's just little clips back here let's see if i can get a better view here you see where the clips go in there and over here that's where the clips go in you just pop those out and you're just buying yourself a little room to get this bottom piece out here uh, this bottom piece out right here is what we want to get out on this side there's the little tripometer button lighting button uh, yeah, so once you pull this out, it gives yourself a little room here. Pull it right out. And it's just about out. Okay. Now we have enough room to get this piece out. This just pulls right out. Just pull on it. Okay. And the trim goes around the whole steering column here. Okay. 
Now you can see the bolts. The bolt right in there. And there's one on the other side there. That's those are the two top bolts. Those are a little tricky to get to. The easier bolts are at the bottom. You can see at the steering column right there are the other two bolts. Those are the bottom bolts. So all these four bolts are gonna are gonna come out. We're gonna pull the whole steering column right out from here. There's gonna be one connector to disconnect in here. Okay, so the two bottom bolts are out. Those are easy. Now the top one, that's a little trickier. You have to get up in here, and I'm gonna take the camera down there with me right now. I don't know what the view is gonna be like, but we'll find out. This is my setup for the tops. Um, this is a universal joint with an E12. Uh, I got a six inch extension and I've got my uh, automatic ratchet here. You can just use a, a ratchet if you don't have one. Uh, you can even get to it with an impact driver, um, but I find it's easiest with my ratchet. So I'm gonna take the camera under there and we'll see what we can see. I see it's right there is one of them and there's the other one. So, so this is a difficult position as it is. I am not going to try to get this out and put it on camera. Uh, these are the two screws you have to get out and you just get on your back and with a universal joint you should be able to reach it uh, or just a, even an open 10 millimeter will, will grab that bolt pretty well. So however you can get to it, get those two screws out. Okay, so the top two screws are out. Top two screws a little shorter than the top, the, the lower bottom screws. There's one more bolt I have to get to. And this one's a little bit tougher than it usually is just because the steering wheel is turned on this car. It's, you see it's turned all the way like this. And uh, let's see, the screw I'm talking about is this one here. This is the screw here, but that's the bottom side. So I have to have to reach up here and see if I can get it out. Uh, that's the next part. So once we get this out, this steering column is going to separate from this coupling right here, okay? Before you pull this out, it's a good idea to mark with a Sharpie where it comes out, how it comes out, and note that the wheel is either straight or it's turned. It's got to go back the same way, okay? So I'm going to pull this out. So first I'm going to get the screw out, and then I'm going to start pulling this out, and I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie before I pull it all the way out. Okay, so I got the screw out. It is a T45. This is it. Uh, that's the last screw you have to get up before you can start pulling the steering column out. Now, the steering column pulls apart right, right here. Be careful with this, this piece back here. This will come right out also, okay? So usually I hold this side with one hand and pull the other with the other hand. That's where you want to mark it. You're going to mark it right there. As you can see, it's starting to come out. And you want to mark it there. So I'm going to go grab a Sharpie. I'm going to mark on this silver plate here where the teeth align. And I mark it where there's larger grooves. There's three larger grooves. And that's where I'm going to mark it. You can see some grooves here. They're all the same size up a little higher on this side. I don't know if you can see this, if it's in focus or not, but there's a thicker groove and that's where I'm gonna mark it. See, and that's where I've marked it with a Sharpie. There's three of them, I can only see two. So I've marked two. The other one's gonna be on the other side, not visible. So I've marked it. There's thicker grooves where I marked it. One, there's three lines that are thicker than the rest. And so I've marked it there on those thicker grooves. Okay, so the steering column is just about out. This is the connector that you have to disconnect. It connects right there. Okay, so this is the steering column out, sitting on the seat here. There's the steering lock. This is the device that's causing all these problems. Uh, that's the 13 millimeter bolt we're gonna have to remove. I'm gonna take it to a table inside the garage so that we can get a better look of this. That's the connector, I just disconnected it. Goes there. That's the ESL connector. Okay, taking it to the bench, we'll get a better look. 
Okay, here's the steering column. Sitting on the bench here. That's the steering lock. That's a 13 millimeter bolt. We're gonna have to remove that bolt and probably cut it off because, uh, you know, we can also drill a hole here and try to move this wheel by hand, but it's just faster and easier to cut this bolt off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt. It's a 13 millimeter. And then I'm just gonna dremel it off, cut it right off. So we can get the steering, uh, steering lock out of the steering column. We don't need it there anymore. We're gonna replace it with an electronic emulator that's gonna last a lifetime. No more problems. These are faulty by design. They always go bad. Even if you get a new one, it's gonna go bad again in several years. You don't wanna deal with this problem again. So it's best to eliminate it with an electronic emulator. The only difference is that the steering wheel will no longer lock. It's not gonna lock because it doesn't have a lock. It's 100% uh, electronic. Uh, no more parts inside that can go bad and cause you problems, headaches. So I'm gonna get this out. Just remove this 13 millimeter bolt. And then I'm gonna show you that this bolt will not depress. So we still can't get it out. So I'm gonna have to cut it out. Okay, coming up. Okay, so there's the bolt minus the nut. The nut's off already, okay? Now, still a problem because we're supposed to be able to depress this bolt. And we have to depress this bolt here in order to get out of this metal bracket from the steering column. It's not gonna come out without doing that. So we're just gonna take the fast route and cut this off. Here's my solution. Little Dremel tool. Uh, okay, so we have the bolt cut off now. I use a Dremel tool cut it right out and now we can slide this out of the steering column there it is okay so if you're doing this at home and uh, you're purchasing my service on eBay I usually ask you for the ignition switch this is the ignition switch that's where you put the key in to start the car uh, it's very easy to get it out when you have the steering column out, even if you have the steering column in, you can still get it out just a little tighter. But uh, as you can see right here, this is, there's the ignition switch, right? There's two electrical connectors, one here and one down there. And there's one retaining cable back there, right up in here. So um, first thing you have to do is uh, just unscrew this little ring, this little plastic ring. There is a tool that can be purchased on Amazon or eBay or wherever. I'll leave a link in the description for this little tool. And it just uh, goes right in here like this. And you just turn it Clock, uh, counterclockwise. And this screws out. See, it's just a uh, just a plastic nut to hold it in place. And then you just push it in, it pops right out. With your hand, you can just bang it and it's out. See, now this is the top clip. That's the one that gives people the most trouble. Uh, it's simple to get out. Pinch these two together like a clothespin and then Pull it forward. Out here. That's it. Pinch these two and then pull it forward. Forward and then up. And to reinstall, it's the reverse. You're just going to stick this little, so it has like a little pick. It goes into the switch. And once it's all the way seated, back. That's it. Okay, and then there's just two electrical connectors on here. One here and one there. And those, you just press them in. Press it in like this and pull it out. 
Okay, same here. Press this in. And there's your switch. This is what I need. Okay, ignition switch and key. That's all I need. If you have two keys, you can send them both. If you only have one key, just send the one key. Even if you have no keys, I can still get it done. It just takes a lot longer. Also, I sell these keys on eBay. I usually charge 150 to make a spare key. You can find that listing on eBay. Uh, I will leave a uh, description, a link in the description for both this service where I program an emulator for you and for the uh, spare key also. If you, if you ever need a spare key, say you don't have a problem with your ESL, but you just need a spare key, I would also just need your ignition switch. And um, if you want a spare key, send your original key. Uh, if you have no keys, I can still get it done. It just takes longer, but uh, I can still get it done with no keys. Just send me your ignition switch. Okay, I will leave links in the description. All right, this is the emulator that I created with the uh, information inside of your EIS. So these need to be programmed. You can't just buy one from eBay and uh, the seller sends it to you, plug it in and it starts your car. No, it doesn't work that way. You've got to get the information from the ignition switch and the key. Uh, and then you take that information and you put it into the uh, emulator with some tools. Uh, so. That's the service that I provide on eBay. Uh, you send me your switch and your key. I send you your switch and key with a programmed emulator. Okay, the service I sell on eBay is uh, $239.99. Uh, I also sell these unprogrammed for those of you who do have the tools to program this, uh, shops or, or whoever, you know, if you, you're a hobbyist and you like to program stuff uh, and you have the tools to do this, um, I, that's available unprogrammed as well. I sell it for $75 on eBay. So. Um, this is complete now. I took this inside, I programmed it, it's ready to go. So all you have to do when you receive these things back in the mail, your ignition switch, your key, and the programmed emulator, you can test it out, you can plug it in. See, I plugged in this ignition switch already, the two electrical connectors, and I'm about to plug in this uh, emulator, and we should be able to start the car now. That sound was the emulator working. One click when you put the key in the ignition sounds, uh, it means it, it's working, okay? Now we can start the car. And that's the car started. Okay, all that's left to do now is put everything back together. So uh, if you're interested in this service, I will leave links to my eBay page in the description. I will also leave my email address so that you can contact me directly. Uh, if you need to speak to me, contact me by email first, and then I will give you my phone number. Okay, we can speak over the phone if you need advice or suggestions or if you need a diagnosis. All right, so um, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.